Please remember to share out these videos to as many other zombies as possible so other people can see these historical places and learn more about history, the told and or untold history that may or may not be all around us. So with that said, So there's a look at the U.S. You can see Ohio's right here. I have Geauga County outlined right here in this red square. And then right here to the left, just a little bit to the west, is Cleveland, Ohio. I'm going to show you something I found in Cleveland online. I, I hadn't seen this yet in person. Uh, now that I know that it's there, I, I feel like I really need to go see this because this one's really amazing and it's really amazing that it's still there. It looks like they even tried to there was some petition or campaign or something to bring it down years ago, but still standing and wow. Again with the rock and the size of the rock and the weight and everything it would take to move that around. I mean, there's other things too, but just that alone, you've gotta have a complete thriving economy behind all that, like backing all that up. I mean, just think our economy right now the more I'm looking at this, again, I've got a lot to learn and like explore here still, but from San Francisco to New York City, East Coast to West Coast, from top to bottom as well, this type of architecture, this type of rock, these types of buildings are everywhere. And so many of them have already been taken down, which were bigger and better than what's still left out there existing. These right here, which they call the Guardians of Traffic, I would love to know what they were originally called, what they're originally all about. I'll take a couple stabs at it, but wow. Just look at that. And I'll show you the front. I'll show you a better picture of it, but not the builders of this thing. These are people who maybe are cleaning it up a little bit and then posing with an amazing something that 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 they're lucky to get to pose with. But these like not not the people who built that. Here's another look at it. I mean, wow. And so this goes back to what I've talked about in some of my earlier videos where this, this stuff was here and you find the same type of architecture and buildings scattered across other ancient places throughout the entire world. So to say like the whole story that's been fed to us of oh, nobody was really here except for some Indians and they just had bows and arrows like no, there were at some point there was this civilization here who built like this. And like I mentioned in earlier videos as well. Lots of disaster has swept through these areas, storms, floods. And so to see this thing still sitting here, maybe these were something like these ancient civilizations highways. And maybe they were highways, like really, really, really high up there, like <laughs> really high up there. Um, and now maybe somehow we're some in some ways, in some spots, we're using their remnants or something as our new highways. But I, I don't know, I'm just taking guesses here, but look at that that's amazing and this i kind of want to look in i've had it kind of not i don't have an actual list but just in my head of like stuff i want to look into and chariots are really interesting especially this style uh especially how i don't know especially how that's right here and then uh wells fargo uses that i don't know maybe these were the vehicles that ran on these highways <laughs> The proof is in the architecture. I mean, if you want the proof, it's, it's sitting still in some of the architecture. After the discovery of the New World, the land that became Geauga County was originally part of the French colony of Canada, which was ceded in 1763 to Great Britain and renamed Province of Quebec. Then in the late 18th century, the land became part of the Connecticut Western Reserve and then was purchased by the Connecticut Land Company 
1795. The Connecticut Land Company was a post-colonial land speculation company formed in the late 18th century to survey, and this is what I think is interesting, encourage settlement in the eastern parts of newly chartered Connecticut was reserve of the former Ohio country. The area that this company bought, this Connecticut land company, was a post-American revolutionary period region. And it was part of the lands claim settlement adjudicated by the new United States government. What that means is there's the land claim that I'm talking about, uh, the lands claim settlement. It was adjudicated, meaning it was affected by or whatever, how, you know, affected by the new United States government. So there was an American Revolution, and out of that Re American Revolution comes a new United States government. And that new U.S. government that was set up after this American Revolution was had to do with contentious, conflicting claims by eastern seaboard states, so wealthy rulers from the east on which territories and how much they get to own over here in America and all that, um, and on, you know, moving west. And so it was just basically like, there's a huge land grab, like conquering of land that takes place, which looks like happened, which looks like the American Revolution was that, and the winners, the United States government, uh, we'll just leave it at that for now, are the conquerors. They claim the land, and then basically they start to distribute it out, which is interesting. I've, anyways, I won't get. In, I'll get more into this kind of stuff in future videos, but, um, yeah, you know, like if you buy up a bunch of land, like huge amounts of land, I mean, you're just gonna let it sit there, or do you want to populate it? And those people churn up money and produce things and build on the land and create stuff. And then you get extra wealthy because they're all paying you to be on that land. And then they're also digging up all the resources and all that sort of thing. So that's what it looks like to me is that this new government started, had just conquered, grabbed the new big hunk of land and started distributing it out to people. And the way they did that was through a company called the Connecticut Land Company. Under the arrangement, all the states gave up their lands west of the Allegenies. So that's, if we look right here, the Allegenies meaning gaps in the Allegheny Ridge in west central Pennsylvania. So it's a, a an area that runs through Pennsylvania. So the arrangement was that everything west was given up to the federal government, save for parts parceled out to each claimant state and Connecticut Western Reserve was part of the apportioned to Connecticut's claim. In 1795, the Connecticut Land Company bought 3 million acres of the Western Reserve. And I believe, again, just taking guesses here, it, it would make a lot of sense to me that this Connecticut Land Company, or maybe pre prior to that, but it would make sense to me that they bought these 3 million acres, whatever, and dressed up all the buildings with the white siding and then encouraged people to start to move into them. Here we see a very early picture of it. And this just reminds me of so many other pictures of these buildings. I'll flash a few up on the screen here where you just see the dirt roads and, and I don't know, maybe they've got a paved sidewalk there now at this point, maybe. Kind of hard to tell if that's paved or not. I mean, it, it looks like it definitely could be, but it just looks like an excavation. Like, I, I mean, it looks like we're a lot further along than some of the other ones I've seen here, but like, I don't think these roads and these wheels hauled all this heavy rock and threw it up right there with that incredible design and efficiency and as quickly as we're about to see. Like, it's just not possible. So I think what we're seeing here is that guy's been sitting there for a long time and people showed up because uh, this new group started encouraging settlement in these areas and they owned these areas. And so they started encouraging settlement, and that's what happened is people started showing up and settling these areas that had been vacant and buried for a long time, and why? Why were they vacant? What happened to the people that built them? Why did new settlement need to be encouraged so heavily? Who were the people encouraging settlement? And why did they have the claim on this? And here's another courthouse that was built. I believe this one's a courthouse. To me, it just looks like these are very old, extremely well-built buildings, and these people showed up and started occupying them. And here's the other courthouse. 
Okay, so Geauga was established in 1806. The county seat was first placed at Newmarket where a courthouse was built. The records about this first courthouse are inconsistent and little is known about it. The next year, the country seat was reassigned to Chardon, quickly constructed a courthouse completed in 1808. The one-room log structure with chimney was completely outfitted with wooden amenities. So this guy right here, but if we look at it, this, this is a photo of a replica built in 1905. I would argue that this is it's just to serve the, to the story of these were wood, poor wood people. This courthouse, the wood one, served the county until 1813 when officials agreed a new uh, sturdier building was needed. But in 1868, a massive fire broke out, destroying the courthouse and almost every other building along Main Street, which those buildings had to be impressive as well, I'm sure all made out of rock. The county soon ran a competition to design to the design of its fourth courthouse. And so Clarendon, Chardon, this is kind of going to be the same area right here where we've looked at in previous videos, Portage County, that's down here, Manaway, Garrettsville. And then the second city I'll show you in just a second is Burton right there. The first congregational church dedicated in 1832. First Congregational Church of Clarendon, which was dedicated in 1832. So we're seeing the courthouses, those types of buildings, early 1800s. We're seeing this big boy being thrown up, 1832. And as you can see right here, the church was placed on the National Register of Historic Places in 1974, in the 70s again. Big building, I'm sure just incredible rock underneath. And they've just thrown white siding on top of it and covered everything up. Here's a look at it from the side. You can see the brick sitting right underneath it. Uh, that's, I mean, they just threw the white siding. I imagine it's still brick running up. Maybe it's a different type of rock or stone. But I imagine the whole thing is just brick. And uh, if not in this, if I don't show it in this video, I will in a later one. But I've now found some buildings where I, where the brick is exposed, and you can see, at least you can see partially how thick it is. And these walls are several bricks thick. Like, we, we just don't, it would be extremely rare to just build a building out of straight brick nowadays, but to do it several bricks thick, I think at some point I'll actually call some builders and see if I can get some quotes on just saying, hey, I, you know, this square footage, this, you know, two or three levels out of this stone or out of this brick, how much? I, I bet, I don't know, I haven't done it, but I would bet I get some stupid stupid looks even though it might be just over the phone not actually seeing each other but they might just be like dude what like that's not a that's not a thing we can build some lumber but that's like five times the price right now so maybe you want to not do lumber maybe you know maybe just don't have a place to live in right now just not a good time for that the steeple on it right here is just completely covered i'm sure it's something way more gorgeous than whatever we're looking at right here but here's a look at it from the front Nice white siding thrown over everything. And so here's a look at the stairs, and I don't know, maybe that's something we added on. Maybe that's something we threw. I mean, yeah, it looks like there's stairs thrown on top of, I don't know, sometimes that they throw, you know, we've seen it where they throw that rock on top of the brick, so maybe that's what's going on right here, and then we set little steps on top of that. And then here's a look just moving over to the side, and you can see just full stories buried underneath. And then across the street from the building is the Clarendon Township Administrative Building, which is just another building covered in white siding. And I would imagine that these buildings connect underneath. Uh, that is actually one big building we're looking at, but right here in the middle is a buried section of the building or something like that. Because I've found other buildings, same thing, white siding, all the same, and, but, and sometimes they build connections between the two. Uh, but sometimes you can see that they've uncovered or that there's actually that there's just the building is connected. And if you saw that middle part or if more earth was covering that middle part, it would just look like two separate buildings. So that might be what's going on right here.
Like, come on. I mean, I get that we build basements, but that's not a basement. That's just another story. Like, this top story with those windows, that's just another one of those stories buried right here and another story underneath that one, at least. I had this little pavilion next to it, and it says, in memory of those who passed through these portals, interesting word to use, maybe, since 80, 1887 when the bell was installed in the original school. And here we'll take a look at some of these schools that were, were located in Clarendon. Again, I'd like to go visit these and see how they look now, but a lot of these just gone demolished, like this one, for example. But that is just a beast of a building right there. Nice, they got some little bikes next to it right there. I mean, like, that still doesn't even, like, that just doesn't seem like it fits. Here's another one. So I think that one, you know, I think they've stripped that one down quite a bit. It just made it not look as good as it initially once did. Here's another one. That's like a, a terrible picture of this school, but another brick one. Here's another one, just a brick complex. And here's another one. And yeah, sure, I, I, I get fire escapes. Maybe some of these are fire escapes, but that's where I just go back to the builders of these rock buildings wouldn't just build little rinky dink railing fire escapes it would that it would they'd find that that like that type of a designer would find a better way to create a fire escape in, in or on the building now we'll check out burton ohio and there's a bit more to see in burton but first before we do that i thought we would look at the temple of music this isn't in ohio this was in new york absolutely ridiculous that this was taken down they like all of this was taken down. So I think this one is maybe the best one to start with. I don't know, this one or this one, because you got the, the water out here in front. And, you know, again, to say, like, these people built these and didn't know how to flush the poop out of them, but then also built waterways, water features, like, nope. If you build this, you know how to power it, you know how to heat it, you know how to do probably stuff we don't even know how to think about. But this is insane. Look at these. This is no, like, this is no joke. And you think about why they would knock this down, why you would have to knock this down. Like, how did, how did, I, how did, I, I, I want to know what all these, who are these people and what are they thinking? Like, who was ever okay with knocking any of this down? What was the story, the reasoning for knocking this stuff down? Oh, it was uh, the buildings were unsafe or something? I would say this is, you know, if you've got plans for not letting people know about who their ancestors were and the type of technologies and people that that they built and people that they were, like, you got to get rid of this stuff. You can't just have this stuff laying around. Uh, also, like, these buildings are insane. Like I said, you got to, of course, these buildings know how to, power and sewage and all that sort of stuff but the newbies that show up to settle it these if these are just sitting there from ancient times and newbies show up to occupy these things then yeah like if you're gonna have a really hard time powering them putting them to good use and the gold rush would be running to all of these places and all the ones that are also buried and grabbing everything off of them that you can right like stripping them down like just any that don't have a, that someone else hasn't already laid claim on or whatever like the gold rush was the buildings the architectures the technologies that were left behind not panning flakes out of rivers because this type of stuff also existed all the way out in san francisco we're looking at new york early 1800s same stuff existed out in san francisco this was 1700s 1800s america which i believe was leftovers from I don't know how back, I mean, these things could sit here forever with how they're built. If you're not like intentionally trying to destroy these, like they can withstand mother nature. The people who built this knew how to build a building that would withstand mother nature and they have fires, floods. But when man decided, all right, it's time to knock these down. Like, how do you get to decide that? But then, then yeah, with a lot of effort, you can start to crumble these things down. But man, what a, what a past, what a history right here. And, and we think we're so advanced and civilized. This is just insane. In so many ways, this does not make sense. In so many ways, this is mind-blowing proof of a much better, much more advanced, prosperous 
civilization previously here, and these people aren't even those people. And these people were the people before us. So what's going on? This is, look at these statues. I, this is, this is not, this is what you think of from Rome and Eastern, like, <laughs> this isn't, this isn't, this doesn't match the story we've been told. There is a completely different story here. And then this was a bank. This is a, not the Temple of Music, but this is a bank from in the same area in Buffalo. Mind blowing. Here's a picture from the Library of Congress of it lit up at night. And they, demo they, they destroyed all this in 1900 or 1901. Gone. Like, look at this fountain structure out front here. This is just a full blown palace, kingdom. Ah, it's just insane. Like, it's, it's, it's really fun and amazing to see this stuff. But at the same time, it's kind of like sometimes I have to feel a little sad and heartbroken. Just like this is what used to be. And nowadays it's, I mean, I get that there's still, I'm painting and uh, you know, I'm taking it to the extremes here, but like there was this and now we're talking like shipping containers and tiny homes is what people are living out of. Now here's a look at Burton, Ohio. blimp view just right in that same area still and i love how there's obviously so much rich, rich history in all of this area but really there i mean they say a little bit of stuff but like they don't give you much but one thing they do want to make sure you know is that an incident in burton led to u.s supreme court case when a dude performed a human cannonball act like can we re can we read something a little bit more like substantial actually about the history of this place please so here's a look at some schools that existed exist in burton most of them are gone here's one that still does exist which i got to go see which is really cool the i'll show you some close-ups of this building really really cool this one unfortunately <laughs> demolished but man that's a beast of a building here's another one where it's just been stripped down um and it's just, it's just the brick left still an amazingly strong brick building but i mean it's just they've they've stripped a lot of it a lot of it's buried and then same thing with this school looking like that here's a look at that first one again so it was it's i guess it's been i guess it was first a high school and then now it's a public library here's a look at it when it was a high school but before it was a high school what was it right because this thing's been here long before they turned it into a high school and here's another look at it from the front 1906 one more look at it right here and uh, with the, again with the wagons and the horses uh, uh, horses can i'll do i'll do a video where i like actually break down the math on weight and what horses and wagons can move i don't think you're moving those on a horse and wagon i think maybe when you run the calculations on i, I, I mean this pretty seriously when you run the calculations on how much potentially a mammoth an elephant can move Maybe and then, but you'd also, but you couldn't. It wouldn't be on wood wheels and wagon. Uh, you'd ha you'd have to have some. They'd they'd have to be hauling. They'd have to be pulling something much sturdier and stronger to support the weight of all the rock on top of like. So I don't know. It's uh you'd either need much much bigger animals and carts, or technologies that uh, I don't know. I don't know what those would be, but still with with train and train and horses yeah, most tons of these buildings were put up pre-train so that doesn't make sense but then the ones they are saying that were put up during train even then very difficult to move that weight from train to building location on dirt and mud okay so the first thing you notice is a big water tower this is the big welcome to burton water tower i don't you know i don't suspect that that's as old as the buildings that we're looking at and I like look at in my opinion it's really ugly they've got the red orangish you know like the orangish brick on the bottom and they put maroon like dark plum red paneling siding on the top two-thirds of the building I don't know that's just like but the original building is pretty amazing it looks like so the church was organized in 1808 and the building was erected in 1836, so they built this big boy in 1836. Yikes. And in case you didn't th think it was that big, it's actually got this back section behind it. So again, I would argue that this is 
just the top of whatever much bigger building was here. This is what remains of it above ground. Okay, and then the story behind Burton is that first arrivers in 1796, there was, uh, what's his name here? Thomas Umberfield brought the family and built the first home, a simple log cabin located just across the street from that church I just showed you. So here's walking up to the log cabin. Now, I guess let's just start here. Walking up to it, I'll pause this here. So we've got far left one, two, I'll run it forward a little bit, three, four. So we've got four rock chimneys scattered throughout this pretty big log cabin, I would say. And then across the street is where you see that old high school, which is now a public library. We'll look at that in a second. And then it had these interesting stones. So you can kind of see, okay, so from the side right here, you can get a look at one of these other, like that's a big rock chimney right there. So it says that under this penstock, I should look up what a penstock is. So it says a penstock is a, I don't know what that is, sluice, sluice? Sluice is an artificial channel for conducting water. Okay, so a sluice or gate used to control a flow of water, a pipe or conduit used to carry water. These are probably part of an old, like I was saying, like if you were throwing up these types of amazing buildings, you probably knew how to do the water just fine. And this is probably old that, yeah, out of some sort of water structure or something. And they say that here was the first telephone station in the state of Ohio. So it's just like four rock chimneys, some ancient water structure, but it's just a, a rinky dink log cabin slash some of the first technology apparently in at, at least in this time is the telephone and it happened to be here when you've got right across the street, like, I don't know. <laughs> so here's a look up the chimney. And this chimney is just as old and just the same as any of the chimneys anywhere else. And it's got signs of fire on it. And I get that it's a chimney, but the exterior for to see signs of fire top to bottom. And then this is interesting right here. Yeah, I kind of think like maybe the chimneys were still standing and then maybe they've shoved a wood cabin structure into it because i mean that's i don't that's not you wouldn't you wouldn't if you were the builder of that chimney you wouldn't uh that's not what that would look like and then i thought this was really interesting this fence that sits ankle high so there's me stepping over the really tall fence. All right, and here's the Burton Public Library. It was established in 1910, and the brickwork on this building was amazing. This, I think right here, whatever this originally was, white in the middle, they've just painted over, like they do with a lot of the white siding buildings we see, but they left a lot of brick on this one. And like this is just, I'll give you some more close-ups of it, but it's really beautiful. Uh, like that's... It's just really cool brickwork. And again, I bet what was right here and here has been stripped off. Maybe it was gold and they stripped it, but the brickwork, regardless, the brickwork is just insane. See like here, like this little wood sign, the builders of this building, again, no, this is the new occupants of the building put the new high school sign out there in 1884. And I walk back here to the side of the building to show you that there's definitely levels buried underneath. And you can see right there, so that rock on the bottom making it look like the foundation not the foundation because you can see it just continues to run across the tops of these windows here and uh, there's this guy sitting around the corner buried window again i think we're more looking at really just the tops of these buildings like, look at these bricks that's craziness to build that way that's so cool and these are yeah these are stripped whatever was here originally is not there but the different colors in the brick here, how they're angled like that to create that kind of like fan texture or whatever, so cool. And here's a quick bonus of another building that I found in Cleveland. I really need to just do a full video on Cleveland here at some point, but look at this. That is insanity. This is very similar to the one we see. I can't remember exactly where it's at. I'll pop up the picture, this one here. Uh, similar and Yo, I mean, look at this picture when there's people walking by it. Look at these pillars. And this is, in this picture, is literally the very, very bottom of what we see. 
right here. Like that, these are those pillars and people, like people are just little dots down here. And this whole thing, they built that in the eight, in the 18, late 1800s, early 1900s in Cleveland for who? And who did that? 